Okay, I just came back from like a the, like the visa application center for Chinese visa for my daughter, and I just I got it for myself like last week, and I just want to talk about my experience, and I'm kind of getting a bit tired now, so I don't know how I'm going to say, but so I'm trying to save you some time, um, with this whole process, and so my experience is a little bit different because. I was going for an emergency kind of visa for emergency travel, but I can kind of speculate to sort of how a normal appointment would be like as well, because just from what I've seen, and 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 some of this is very specific to the, the Chinese applications, the visa application center in Sydney. Okay, so in Sydney, it's it's in the it's on William Street, one forty, and you know, if you, if you take like the M2, it's literally like one of the exits all the way at the end. Okay. So like you go through the lane curve tunnel or whatever, I think like this, but you have to like change all the way to the left lane to exit. It's a little, it's like Wooler Maloo. Okay. So if you take the M2, you can literally just like hit the doorstep of this place. Okay. So you get there. And like, even though you can't necessarily park on William Street, there's like a, a street a few blocks over that's always got like spots, and you can it's like two hour parking, and you can pay for like for that. Okay, so when you get to William Street, depending on when you go, if you go in the morning, like peak hour morning, there's so many people that they they actually line up outside the building. So there's a security guard there, kind of making a line outside the building. Um, so I was, um, I was going for an emergency appointment, so I didn't have to line up. Okay. But that line isn't there if you come like closer to 12 or after 12. Okay. That line's only there. And, and I think for good reason, because if you get your, if you got your application in before 12, you can get it the next day. Okay. You get it in after 12, the best you can do is the day after. Okay. So there's a good reason why it's busy before 12. But the application center is actually open basically all day. Um, okay, so you go, so you go to the security guard. I, I said I was an emergency, and in my case, it was because um, my wife's dad's dying, and so so she, I got I got a number from the from the security guard, and then I went up to you know level one, and so then outside the elevator, it's sort of like another processing line before you enter the main center. And even though, you know, you think you're the only one with an emergency, it's actually, there's a whole bunch of people with other kind of emergencies. So there's actually a line for emergency people. And what happens is there's, there's someone who sort of checks. So even if you have an emergency, you still need the application filled out. Okay. You can't just show up empty handed. Um, so there's someone that kind of checks, you have all the application you need. Okay. So I, I made some other video for the application. Um, but but here I just want to talk about the actual the visit of submitting the application and so yeah so I think yeah so there's a lot of people a lot lot probably a lot more than you might expect depending on if you've been there or not and it's very crowded and like the pressure is going to be kind of on to have the right stuff because if you have something that's wrong with the application it's going to be really annoying to fix it sort of with everyone watching and you know with with not a lot of time so it's best to have everything um prepared beforehand and that's something i'm grateful for my my mom for, for for reminding me and so and obviously the people there you know like it's an annoying application process but the people there didn't design it they're just kind of there just like you trying to get through it so um i think just if you're nice to them they'll they're trying to they try they'll try to be helpful to you as well so um so the person checks that you have basically all the things you need to submit okay and then um and i think depending on when you arrive because i, I arrive when i arrive when you arrive early so you do kind of end up lining up on the side to get your documents checked again before you actually go to the counter to submit your application and so that line i timed took about 25 minutes okay but once you get to the end of the line and, you know, they, they, you cut your passport photo out and stick it onto your application and you submit all your photocopies, get everything stamped. 
um, you just get your application kind of checklisted again. Um, if you're doing an emergency application, um, you'll you'll get given a, a ticket with a C on it, or or something different. That's not an A or an E at least. And you'll go to counter one, and they'll see you pretty much right away. So there's not that much of a wait. And if you get your application before um, twelve o'clock, you can put a rush on it, and you get it the next day between twelve and four. Okay. And the the application for me for a Q2 rush was like it cost me like two hundred something dollars, and it was definitely worth it. Okay, you you don't want to be in these places as much as 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 much as you have to. Okay, because it's so crowded. It's like a hundred people there. Um, you just want to get it get it out of your life as soon as possible. Okay, so just pay the money, get out of there, enjoy your life. Okay, so um. Yeah, so I guess that's also the difference. Like, because the collections are usually like twelve to four, um, the busyness of the application center. A lot of it is just people collecting their passports, which is separate from the people submitting the applications. Whereas in the morning, like this, similar numbers of people, but they're all submitting the applications. Okay, so if you got an appointment, um, I guess the difference is if you had an appointment. Is that you would get a ticket number like with an A on it, maybe A for appointment, and I'm assuming depending on what appointment block you're in, you'd probably just get the number depending on the order you actually showed up. Okay, so if you came early, so I guess one advantage of coming early is, um, sort of if anything goes wrong, you can kind of fix it before twelve o'clock, and then eventually still get it in by twelve, and so if you get an appointment, I'm assuming they just so you've got to do the line, the, the half hour line to get your documents checked and then you but you're kind of just waiting for your number to be called anyway so that line sort of it's just part of the waiting process it's not an extra wait um because like you're probably gonna wait half an hour to submit your application anyway um and then so when you do submit your application by the time you get called up to submit your application like it seems like at that point whether you're like in the, the sort of emergency or appointment category it's, it's kind of it doesn't matter anymore like you're, you're just you're just at the counter with your application form and i think if, if you have an appointment you can still put a rush on your application at that point as well so um i think at that point it, your, how you got the appointment doesn't actually matter anymore it's just that part should be the same and then um you pay and you, you don't pay you you get a ticket and you come back you know whenever it is to collect okay uh, another thing that I should mention is if you come to the visa application center close to 12, like it's not like, so once I came like maybe, you know, like 10, 30 or 11, the other time I actually came at 11, 30. Um, so when you come close, so obviously the disadvantage of coming close is if you have some mistakes, you, you're not probably going to fix it before 12. But one good thing is you don't have to do the 30 minute line anymore. You can go straight to the counter one. Uh, obviously, after the 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 nice lady checks your um checks your documents, and so if you go straight to counter one, you save that half hour lineup, and you can you can literally get out of there in like five minutes. Okay, but um, you know it it kind of it's it, it it may obviously depend on how many other people are in your situation because so when I got there, there wasn't actually. It was only like I was the first in line for the emergency thing, and there was only one other person. Um, obviously, the normal line was huge, and, but there was no like line downstairs. Like the the security guard had move upstairs, and I just had to tell the guy at the door that I want I was going for an emergency visa. Okay. All right, and then collections. Okay, collections, and I, and I, some of this obviously applies to the appointment as well because it's just a lot of waiting. I, I suggest when you have a lot of waiting that you know is going to happen. Uh, you bring something to do so it's not just to waste your time. So in my case, actually, I applied for my wife's resident return visa while I was waiting to collect my uh, my visa and then my, my daughter's visa. And it actually basically saved a lot of time. And so, um, so basically, when you get your passport collection, you can actually, even though it says after 12, I, I'm pretty sure that people are coming slightly before 12 because 
once I got there at like pretty much exactly 12 and I was like already the 10th person. But the other time I got there like um, maybe like almost like after one, I was like, I was like, like the 40th person. Okay. And so to get through 40 people, like some of them, they're, they're doing it quite fast, but it still could take like half an hour, 40 minutes. Like, you know, it's like a minute per person is actually not that unreasonable. And depending on how many people, there could be one or two counters open. So maybe early on, there's only one counter, but when people start piling up, there's like two counters. There's usually counters 11 and 12 on the very far right. And, um, yeah, so, and, and that usually should be pretty easy. Um, you just wait your turn in line and then you, you, you basically, all you need to do is pay. Okay. And yeah, for some reason it should be easy, but for me, my batch, my phone ran out of batteries and I used to tap everything with my phone to pay for stuff. So I realized just in time and I had to like find my like bank card or, and I came back just before my number was called. So something kind of easy still was a little bit weird. So like, yeah. And when you collect your password, you, you, you get your ticket from the front person security guard guy. It's like an E it's like E and then it's like the order, order you are in the line. So I was like, you know, I was E one seventy seven when I came at like 12 and I was E two forty or two, 238 or something when I came at like one or something. Okay. Um, and then, yeah, in that case I had to wait from 190 onwards and then, yeah, but the screen tells you what, what the person, what, what person they're up to at that stage. I think it's not that big a deal cause you're not really worried anymore at the other stages. Like you're always worried if something's going to go wrong, um, and, and waste a whole bunch of time. Whereas when you get to that final stage, like, it's pretty much a guarantee. Like your time is like, it doesn't really vary. Like you you kind of, you know, there's like two people, like two minutes per person before you, um, you're, you're basically guaranteed to get it. You just need to pay and then you're done. So, um, yeah. And yeah, so that's the, that's the appointment. Um, yeah, I, I, I actually made an appointment, but I didn't, I could, I couldn't actually cancel it, but I think that they have so many people that it's, it's hard to really, um, manage people's appointments individually. I think when there's that many people, like you make an appointment, the computer generates you an appointment sheet, people see the sheet and give you another, another number. And I think from that point on your appointment kind of, it's almost, it's not relevant for the interaction that you have on that day. It's more that like now you have a ticket and it's all about your application form and maybe they look at your online application and stuff when they're processing your visa and stuff. But I think by that time, it's really like you're, you're through the door and you just got to wait. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm starting to rant again. So maybe I, I hope that helped you um, to get a Chinese visa. So, I mean, I, Yeah, I should mention. So when you get an emergency, like no appointment, you need to prove your 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 emergency. So I think I mentioned at the start, but I just wanted to mention it again. Like in this case, I needed like a medical certificate to prove like the person was actually sick, and then obviously I had to have all the other stuff that I would normally have for my application for a visa anyway. And so. Uh, like in this sense, I would save at least a week because it usually takes a week to get an appointment and I would save sort of at least the half hour to line up for that, for the, for the, um, the, the form check. And, uh, and depending on if I came early, I would save time on the queue at the very front as well. So I'm kind of grateful for that. So it's like a compassionate service. Um, but yeah, I've, I've also been on the end of the long wait as well. And I think we're, we're just trying to save as much time as possible so we can, you know, do the things in life that we want to, we want to spend the time on. All right. I hope that helps. I'm going to stop ranting.
I might make another video about my wife's passport application process. All of this, I don't know, every time we apply, there's always some sort of exception, you know, like it's never like, just like, oh, we just Google it. Everyone does that. So we do that. Like usually like, even when I call up, like they don't really know what the situation is right off the top of the top of their head. And sometimes they don't really figure out also. And so I guess that's why I want to make these videos because, you know, I'm we're hopefully only going to do this once, but I uh, learned a lot from it. And if a lot of people kind of learn from this, they could save a lot of time. Okay. And, and a lot of time really adds up, you know, and, and I think, yeah, I, I value my time and I think other people value their time and hopefully we all save a lot of time from the lessons we learn. All right. All right. See you. Talk to you next time. Bye.